So I'll do the talk in English because I think it's uh, easier and faster. Uh, so I'm uh, Guillaume Ardinio. I've uh, studied at UPFL in Switzerland for my master's and I'm currently uh, an intern at uh, Kudelski Security also in Switzerland. And uh, my talk will be about PDF. So a quick history of uh, PDF. I started uh, about 25 years ago and the first version of P of a PDF, PDF reader was released in 1993 by Adobe. Uh, then in 2008, it became an ISO specification for PDF 1.7. So alternative readers to Adobe Reader uh, became, started to, to be developed, such as Evidence or Major Brothers all have their own uh, PDF reader now. And soon, maybe this year, maybe next year, there will be a new specification for PDF2. So contrary to what people think, a PDF is not just about text and printing and viewing. You have a lot of uh, possible features such as interactive forms, uh, encryption, you can script with JavaScript or Flash. You can have uh, multimedia videos, sound, 3D models. So there's plenty of stuff and it's interesting for security. Um, so it's a commonly used format, maybe one of the most used format file formats, but it has many security issues. So there have been more than 500 vulnerabilities reported in uh, Adobe Reader over the past uh, yeah, 15, 20 years. Uh, also there is variation between all these implementation of PDF readers, so it's not really portable because the same document can be uh, viewed differently by different readers. Uh, the syntax uh, facilitates polymorphism, so you can have one file which, can, which you can open with a PDF reader and uh, decompress as a zip file or view as, as a JPEG uh, document. Um, so Orange Albertini has made a lot of these polymorphic files and recently he made even a SHA-1 collision on PDF files last week. Uh, so what's my e experience about it? I worked on a PDF validation, so I started the Caradoc project uh, two years ago at ANSI, and uh, I presented a paper at uh, an academic conference last year. So uh, in this talk, first I will uh, introduce you to the PDF syntax so that you can write your own PDFs. Uh, then we will see some case studies of security problem. And last, I will talk about my experience in PDF validation and what we find in a real PDFs. So first, what is a PDF document? So at a very basic level, it's just made of objects. And these are written in a textual format, so you can think of it as JSON, but just with a slightly different syntax. So you have a null object, booleans, numbers, strings, but it's written with parentheses. Uh, you have names, which are sort of keywords. You have arrays that can contain arbitrary objects. Uh, dictionaries that map names to other objects. Um, and then you have higher level constructions, such as uh, references, so you can give a number to an object and then refer to this object from other objects. So it works like a pointer. And uh, also there are streams that associate a dictionary with the binary blob. So it can be useful, for example, for images, where the binary blob is the image and the dictionary will specify the file uh, dimensions, for example. Uh, then uh, at the file level, these objects are organized in four parts. So first you have a header that identifies the PDF uh, file format and the version. Then you have a collection of indirect objects that can be referred to by other objects. Uh, then there's a reference table that uh, indicates the location of these objects so that you can uh, uh, fetch them uh, directly. Then there is a trailer, which is the logical root of the document. And last, the end of file uh, indicates the location of the reference table. So you can see that you can pass the file backwards from the end. Uh, of course, this is just the very simple version of a PDF. In fact, there are many more uh, syntactic constructions. So for example, you can 
do an incremental update. So you have an original PDF files and you want to modify some content, you can just append the modification. So you append new objects, then a new uh, table to refer to these objects or to delete uh, previous objects. And then the new under, under file will uh, refer to this table. Um, there are also object streams, that is, you can compress objects into other objects, which is kind of more complicated. And linearization, I will not talk about it, but it's very complex uh, in the structure. Uh, then, at a logical level, so um, um, as I said, uh, the objects can refer to each other. And I just took like a presentation like this one and tried to v visualize it. Uh, all the references between objects, so you obtain something like this. So, as you can see, there are already some structures, and we will try to understand what these uh, packages are. Then, uh, of course, PDF is used uh, to, um, to, to view graphics. So, there is a vector graphic uh, engine, uh, which is like low-level uh, instructions that are stored in a stream. So, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, like examples of very um, basic instruction, you can define a font, like the font ABC in size 10. Then you can uh, define the blue color, so just one color in RGB format. Uh, then you can draw some text with this font and this color. You can move to a point and draw a line, so you, you can draw pretty much everything with just basic uh, instruction. So there is not so much of them, so I just made a cheat sheet. You can find it on GitHub if you want to, to try to play with it. Um, so as I said, the document contains uh, reference tables and stream and all that, and it's boring to create, to create it yourself. So I made a Python script to automate the process so that you can really write your own Hello World PDF and even more. So as you see, with just a, a few lines of code, you can define a font, move the, uh, to some coordinates, and write some text. So I find it pretty cool. And uh, I encourage you to draw your own PDFs. So, so far, so good. Um, so PDF seems quite simple, but there is a, a lot of security problems, and I will uh, show some case studies. So where do security problems come from in PDF? Well, first, the specification is sometimes unclear or ambiguous. Um, there are some uh, designs that are comp too, too, much, too complex or flawed in the standard. And uh, PDF readers often don't check properly the inputs. So we will see the following three uh, case studies. Uh, first, we will uh, talk about uh, malicious graph structures, then um, the graphics instructions, and then the homemade encryption uh, scheme defined by PDF. So as I said, the, the objects form a graph, and uh, this graph is organized into substructures. Most of them are trees. So for example, if you take the pages of the document, they are organized into a tree. So if you start from the logical root of the document, the catalog, it points to the root of the page tree. Then you have a, a tree made of objects, and the leaves of the tree are the, the pages. So the, the first page is just the leaf on the left-hand side, and then the second page is just on the right of it, and so on. So it's quite complicated, I think, just to represent a list of pages, but they decided to do this way. Uh, then you have the table of contents. So here, if I see, uh, if I show it, on the left you can have some uh, section and chapters to um, to navigate quickly uh, in the in the document. And um, so this uh, there is a hierarchy of uh, chapter and sub chapters and sections. And this form uh, also a tree, but at the same level. Um, you can see that they use a doubly linked list here between uh, chapters of the same level. And the problem is, 
um, if you write a malicious document with just a loop in, in here instead of a normal uh, list, then some PDF reader will loop forever with just such an invalid structure, which is kind of annoying because it's very simple to do. And I think that this is a design flaw of the specification because such complex structures are everywhere, but PDF reader don't care about checking them, and then you can easily have a denial of service. So a simpler design would just be like, use an array of references, for example, to store the pages. It would be much simpler than a tree. Uh, then there's the graphic instruction. So as you may know, this is the core of the format because it allows to display content. And um, it's quite complex as well, so there is a potential for many bugs. And there was quite recently this tweet on Twitter. So here you can see there is a normal uh, page. And here in the preview, only the first paragraph here is shown and then the rest is not displayed. So I thought, well, this bug looks quite annoying because why will it break? And then I started to play with the, this PDF file and I, I was trying to write actually a PDF optimizer to, to just simplify the, the document and I found this document, which is really weird because on the preview you can see something, but here the, docu the document is completely broken. So, can we understand that? Well, what's in the graphics interpreter of PDF? Um, I will uh, give you just a simple example of uh, what could possibly go wrong. So, you have the graphic state which stores like the fonts, the color, the current translation, etc. So, the, the state can be modified, for example, with the set font operator, you modify the current font. And then, some operator will read uh, this state. So, draw text will um, read the current font and the current color to draw the text. Uh, also, this graphic state actually is uh, implemented as a stack, so you have push and pop operators to save and uh, restore the graphic state. So it can be useful just to draw something in a different color and then come back to the previous um, state. I think it's easier to write, uh, to produce PDF this way. But the problem is, what if we pop too much? Like, what if we pop, what, what if we try to restore a state that we never saved before? And this would be like a stack underflow on this graphic state stack. So I took this very simple example where I um, I just draw some text. Uh, well, I set the font, draw some text, and then here I pop. And depending on where I pop, the the text is displayed or not. So apparently, with this PDF reader, if you have a, an unbalanced pop, it will just stop the interpreter and the interpreter will not uh, go on. But of course, it depends on the readers and some reader might just try to go back in the memory if you pop and then maybe there can be uh, memory corruption or stuff like that. So let me show you uh, a quick demo of uh, what we've discussed so far. So a loop in the outline structure, a polymorphic file and uh, the, the file from Twitter. So here, this is with some older version of the software. They, are, they just patched it before, but if you open with the Adobe Reader, so you can see on the left, there are page one, page two, page one again, and there is a plus sign here, so you can open it and open it and open it. If I close the page two here, it will jump backwards here and there. So I mean, it's it's kind of cool, but it doesn't break the reader. So what if I try another reader, Foxit reader? So here again, you have your pages, page one, page two, plus sign. I plus, oh, apparently it crashed. So I will not try to send the crash report. Um, then if I open it with another reader here, they detected the loop and they just stopped. Um, so this is fine. Then a polymorphic file. So I open it with Adobe Reader. It detects Adobe Reader. I open it with 
another reader, Foxit reader, it detects that it's either a Foxit, Chrome, or Sumatra. Uh, I can try with Sumatra as well. And then on Linux, so the first file, I open it with events, and it's just loading here. You can wait for uh, several days. Um, here it detected uh, Poplar, which is the underlying library. And then, so there was this POC or GTFO example. I really recommend this reading about uh, security. It's in English. But so if I jump to page six, you can see the, the broken preview here. And yeah, and then the, the bug I found based on this file, but a bit modified. So here it's completely broken. Like some pages are just missing. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, so we have seen several problems, and I think they can lead to several kind of attacks. So first, you can attack directly the parser for a denial of service, or make it crash, or even worse. Um, and second, uh, the polymorphic uh, property can, um, can allow you to evade malware detectors, because if there are variations between the PDF reader and the malware detector parsers, they will see different content, and then uh, you cannot detect the malware that you're looking for. OK, so now I will talk about uh, PDF encryption. So who here has ever used an encrypted PDF or uh, encrypted a PDF them themselves? One, two, three. So a few of them, a few of you. Um, so how does it work? It's supported since uh, version 1.1, so quite early. And it's based on two passwords. So you have a user password that uh, allows you to decrypt and view the content, and then an owner password that uh, allows to unlock permissions to print the document, to modify the document, uh, etc. Of course, it's only enforced by compliant software because the user password is already enough to decrypt the content. So if you have it, if you know it, you could. Uh, already do whatever you want. Um, so there are several security issues about the way they implement the encryption. First of all, the encryption is only partial. So they only encrypt strings and streams, so blobs of binary data. But the general document structure is leaked, so the numbers are not encrypted. They just decided that it is not important. So you can see the number of pages and stuff like that. And also, the way they derive uh, encryption keys from password and checksums is quite annoying. It's based on MD5 and RC4. And uh, as you can see, it's quite complex. Uh, and it's very custom. It's not the way you should do crypto. Uh, so they are in yellow, the two passwords. And then in, um, in uh, blue, there are the checksums that you can see in the file. The, in green, it's a salt like a randomization that you can see in the, fi in the file as well. And the main problem is that if you look uh, closely, the O checksum in the file is just a deterministic function of the password, so based on MD5 and RC4. So basically, you can, if you have the same password as uh, someone else, you, can, uh, you will obtain the same checksum. And we did some campaign of uh, a PDF crawling, and for uh, about 500 files crawled from the internet, a third of um, them reused uh, had a collision uh, in the checksum O. So, yeah, they, there could be some cracking software to recover the password from this checksum. So, I don't advise you to use PDF encryption if you really care about your data. Use something stronger. Okay, so I will now come back to PDF validation. Uh, so I worked on Caradoc, a PDF validator implemented in OCaml. Uh, I started directly from the PDF specification because current parsers in PDF reader uh, suck. And um, so Caradoc, in Caradoc, we tried to verify the file from the bottom up. So first, that the file syntax is correct. Then that 
the objects are consistent, so uh, we implemented uh, some type checking. Then we checked that the graph is correct, so the page tree is a tree and not something else. And then also that the syntax for graphic instruction is correct. So basically, yeah, we have the following steps. First, we have the parser of the PDF. So we have a strict parser and a relaxed parser to do normalization of the PDF. I will talk about it later. Then you can extract the objects. Uh, you can output, if you want, the graph of references or specific object. Then uh, there is type checking. Also, you can output the list of types. Then uh, graph checking, graphics instruction, and then in the end, we validate the file or not. So uh, I, I mentioned we did some syntax restriction uh, because we want to guarantee that the extraction of object is without ambiguity to avoid the polymorphism problem. So we formalized the grammar, we restrict, restricted the structure, so we don't want uh, updates or linearization. And we systematically reject corrupted files, contrary to what the specification says. So in the spec, they say, when a confirming reader reads a PDF file with a damaged or missing cross-reference table, it may attempt to rebuild the table by scanning all the objects in the file. The problem is some reader may implement it, some readers may not, and then you have polymorphism. So we really want to avoid that. Uh, second, we have the type checking. So if I come back to the same uh, document I've shown you before, uh, here we could infer the types of most objects. So here you can see that all these uh, small red dots with uh, yellow dots are pages. So basically, the yellow dots are just links to other stuff. Here you have fonts, and each object is uh, actually a letter of the font, and so on. Here you have the outline structure that I mentioned that forms a tree. So this is pretty cool. And this is uh, an approach that has not really been done before, that we want to validate the types of all objects in a white box approach, in a whitelist approach, contrary to, um, to other tools that just target JavaScript or some specific stuff. Then we evaluated with the real world uh, files. So we collected 10,000 files with the web uh, search engine. And um, so first we noticed that the strict parsers reject too many features that are present in the wild. So incremental updates are present in two thirds of the files. Uh, then object streams and free objects are also common and uh, encryption in 5% of the files. Um, just a note here on encryption. This file just used the empty uh, um, user password. So they are just used for obfuscation, so to say. But you can decrypt them and see the content. So the workaround was to normalize with the uh, relaxed parser before using the strict parser. So here we could normalize 90% of the file. 98% of the file, then we did the type checking, graph checking, and instruction checking. And in the end, uh, already 18% of the file are fully validated with these uh, steps. So the main part of improvement is the type checking, uh, because the specification is so big, it's like 700 pages. We didn't implement everything yet, but we already have some type errors. For example, we could detect some uh, typos, so here an uh, uh, L instead of an uh, I, or here uh, additional letters. And this, we could only do it because we implemented a thorough type checker, and with a simpler tool, you cannot detect that. So this is cool. And also, we identified incorrect tree structures in the wild. So to summarize on Caradoc, uh, here are, are some useful comments. So you can get some statistics about a file. Then you can validate it with the strict uh, flag. You can normalize it uh, with the cleanup command. And uh, there is a new uh, interactive UI in console. So if you have Linux, I really encourage you to try it. You can explore object, decode a stream, search, and so on. So the project is on GitHub. And there is also a Debian um, 
package that, co that will come soon. So to conclude, PDF is a very old format. Well, it's 25 years old, but it hasn't evolved so much at the syntax level. And it wasn't designed for simple parsing, which is error prone. Also, uh, producers make mistakes, but readers try their best effort to correct them. And in the end, you just have compatibility bugs, security holes. And so I really think that we need cleaner, simpler, and more robust file formats. So here are some links if you want to know more about it. And if you have any questions, I'm ready. Questions? Correct me if I'm wrong, but within PDF, you can have active documents also with um, with um, forms and things like this. Have you uh, studied Sorry. these features of PDF too? And what about uh, sig embedded uh, signatures also in PDF files? Uh, can you speak closer to the microphone? Uh, I was speaking about forms in uh, PDF forms? documents. Yeah. So have you looked into them and their security? And also in the... the the document signatures that you are we are starting to see in PDF documents, especially for administrative documents. Yeah, so about forms, I think there are two uh, kinds of forms, like just PDF uh, basic forms, and then they implemented something with XML. So there is an XML in embedded into it, so which is even more complex mm -hmm. to pass, of course. Um, and then whenever you fill in the form, you add uh, an update in the end. But sometimes I had a bug with like, if you update too much, they will not find your updates correctly. Um, about the signatures, I think it's also based on embedded XML, but I haven't really checked uh, in the details. Is it part of, of the specification of Adobe? Or uh, the file format, yeah, or yeah, is it a separate thing? Yeah, there is the main specification, but they also publish some extensions, which are public as well. Uh, but I haven't looked into the details. Other questions? Um, apart from PDF, uh, what do you think is the most promising um, possible? Uh, what What do you think is the most promising format to exchange the documents in the future? Um, I think it doesn't really exist yet, but. You can always like share either your LaTeX sources if you if you use it, or use uh, SVG if you want to um, to have a, a more vectorial format. But there is no perfect format yet, and I think it's really missing. Yeah. Okay. So let's thank the speaker again.